Hi, my name's Adam, and welcome to today's video on using Rapease, our test automation tool, with Spira Team, our test management system. In previous videos, we've shown you how you can record a web test using Rapease and playing it back in multiple browsers. In that video, we stored everything locally on our hard drive, and that's great when you're first using Rupees. However, you usually want to be able to version control and be able to run the test on different machines. That's where Spira Test or Spira Team comes in. During the video, I will use the word Spira Team, but you could be using any of our three Spira products, Spira Test, Spira Team, or Spira Plan. So, what does Spira Team give us? Well, Spira Team, if you've used it already, is a complete enterprise test management system. It lets you store all of your requirements, test cases, uh, defects, test automation information, releases, risks, all of the tasks, all in one integrated platform. However, when you want to do automated testing, you can use it to also store version and execute your automated tests. What we'll do today is we will be creating a web test, very similar to the one we created in the last video, to test the library information system sample application. We'll be recording it in Chrome, we will store it inside of Spira Team and then apply it back directly from Spira Team and see how the results get stored into our tool. So first of all, we go into Rapease and we need to make sure ahead of time that we have connected it to Spira Team or Spira Test. So you go to Settings, you put in the URL, that could be our cloud URL, it could be on-premise, whatever you have, a login and password. You need to specify a folder, a working directory where we can store the tests and you have a token name which is the name of your machine. We'll come back to that later. Hit the test button, make sure you're connected. Uh, we're good in this case. And then we go to File, Create New Test. And this time, unlike before where we chose to create local, we're going to actually store this test in Spira Team. So we choose the folder or create a folder in Spira Team in the test case module. We'll choose the regression test folder and we're going to create a brand new test case. We'll call it um, Testing Library Information System through Spira. Hit OK. And once that's created, you can then use that. And we are using a web test, so we choose web. We are going to record in Chrome this time. And we're going to use the Rupees visual language, which we recommend. And we now have our new test right here. I'll close some of these tabs off. And go back to our application over here. And now we start recording. So we hit the record button. And I'm going to log in and create a book just like we did in the previous video. So let's log in. I'll do it slowly so you can see. And the login is librarian. Password is also librarian. Hit login. Uh, this is my password manager, which you don't want to record. So if something comes up you don't want to record, it's really easy. Hit the pause button to close the application or do something else. You can even remove the item. Leave that too and then just carry on. And now what we need to do is create a book. So we go to book management. We go to create a new book. And we'll call it Adam's book. Hey, insert. Verify the book was created by doing control and one. Verify, yes. And then we do log out and then we hit finish. That's our test. Again, took about 20 seconds to create. There's our test. Uh, we hit save. But now this time we want to save it back into Spira. So we go to the file, save to Spira. Pops up the window. It's going to create what's called a repository in Spira where it will store everything, which is basically a folder of all the assets. That's good. We say create. It's going to upload everything. Say OK. And it's done. And if you go back into Spira over here, into Spira Team, go to Regression Tests, you can see there's our new test case. So let's go click on it. The name uh, was created from within Rupees. If you scroll down, you'll see that it has no test steps. Um, you can add test steps if you want to document it manually or if you use the manual testing feature of Rupees. But it will show you a file name, which is where the automated test is stored in Spira Team. This is the default information here. And if you want to get more information, you can click on this link and that takes you into the document management section of Spira Team. And you can see the document right here. This is the document in Spira Team. If you go into the folder, you can see all the different different test folders here. 
There it is. You can see all the different files have been uploaded. For example, there is the object file, which is the JSON file that contains all of the test information. That's right here, all the objects. All that's right here. So everything that you see inside of Rupees in the file window right here is version controlled in Spyro. So if you make a change and save it again, you got both the old version and the new version. So that way you never have to worry if you made a change and you want to roll back a change. So one of the benefits of using Spyro Team is you do get built-in version control out of the box. However, that's not the only benefit. The other great thing about Spyro Team is it can be used to schedule the test. So if we want to run this test on another machine, perhaps you know, two in the morning you're going to run your entire test suite with hundreds of different test cases. You wanted to run it every day or overnight or based on a schedule, how would you do that? So what you do is go right into the test set section. And the test set is where you schedule things. So we'll go into our regression test set. We'll create a new sample regression test. And for today, we're only going to be running a single test. But in real life, we would run more than one, most likely. So we go to our test set. We go down and we scroll down and we say add test cases. Go into the regression folder. There's our new test. Hit save. And again, we could potentially add other tests here as well or have it run different tests in different browsers. And what we need to do, though, is tell the system where do we want to run this test. And that's where the automation host feature comes in. Ahead of time, I went into Spyro Team, and I created a new automation host called TARDIS, because I'm a Doctor Who fan. And TARDIS is the name of my machine. And there's a tool that comes with Rupees called Rupees Launcher. And Rupees Launcher is the tool that will actually run the test automatically. And Rupees Launcher uses the same connection information as Rupees, but it also has this extra feature here that will show you the name of the machine. And so that's how you can tell Spyro Team to schedule a test to run on a specific machine, because what it will do is it will schedule that test on that machine, and all the different machines will have different versions or different instances of Rapiz Launcher running, and they will each have a different token name. So you might have TARDIS, you might have Machine 1, Windows Machine 2, VM Machine 1, Amazon EC2, or something like that. Each of those machines will have a logical name, which will be listed here in the automation host list. So depending on which one you choose, that will tell the system where do we actually want to run the test. So we're going to run this test on release one of our system, and we're going to run it on TARDIS. And we want to run it right now. So we choose the current date and time, and we hit save. If you want to make it recurring so it runs every hour, or every 10 minutes, or every day, you can do that right here. You can also have it scheduled on build, so if you are using a CI tool like Jenkins, it, or one of the pipelines like Azure DevOps, you can also have it scheduled to run automatically whenever that builds. So we've set the schedule up. What we have to do now is we're just going to close Rupees down and we're going to basically go into the launching tool, which is actually in the system tray Get rid of that over here. And that runs all the time. It's polling for tests. It's designed to run every two minutes or so. You can change that interval right here. Or if you wanted to run right away, you can hit the force poll. So let's get make sure Chrome is ready. Uh, that's good. And we hit force poll. And it's picked up the test. And it's going to start playing it. Oops, let me keep my mouse out of the way. There we go. It is now playing back. And it just looks like it did before it plays it back. The difference now is it's being played from Rupees Launcher. And once it finishes, it will report a result back in. And it does include screenshots. So if it works or doesn't work, you've got a record directly inside of Spyro. So let's go look and see what happened. We can hit refresh. It goes from not started to completed. And in this case, it failed. So let's go down and have a look why. To do that, we go into the test run section. It's right here. And there's our test run. Scroll down. And you can see what happened is it went to log in, went to put the window in, put the login in put the password in, and then I think what happened is I was actually clicking the mouse around when it was playing, unfortunately. And so what actually happened is instead of it clicking the login button, my mouse was somewhere else on the screen and it never logged in. And so I did that actually deliberately so we could get a failure so we can actually see what's going on. And you can see right here, you get the passes up to the point where it fails and then it stops. Inside of Rupees, there's an option to tell it to keep going or you can tell it to stop on initial failure. And that's really up to you. There's also a summary version right here as well. 
And when the test fails, it will also update any of the requirements or other items in Spiritain that are linked to this test case. So if we go back to our test cases or test sets, in this case test set view, you'll see that we have one test that failed. So that's how you would run an automated test from Spira team using Rupees and get back a test pass or a test failure in this case and you can look at the results and see where it stopped. And of course if you go back one second you can also look in more detail at the screenshots. So if we go into that test result, um, those screenshots are a little small, you can also click on this idle icon here to blow it up full screen. So if you look at the failure, it's right here. You can see exactly where it failed because it didn't get, the mouse was over there instead of over there. So that's using the tools together. So thanks for watching today's video on using Rapiz and Aspire Team together. In the next video, we'll be looking more about data-driven testing using Rapiz and a desktop data set. Thanks again.